Alright everyone, welcome back again to some more Umi Neko. The return of Kanon definitely shocked me and put my mind all over the place because now I'm just as confused and I don't know what's to come. But that's why we're here and we're gonna find out together. So if anything else, thank you all for the love and support and let's get back into it. Alright everyone, and we are back. <laughs> さあ、ローザ様には、ダメ。待っ <laughs> After appearing in this horrible state, he had said not to tell Rosa. That could only mean something very disquieting. An eerie sense of panic rose to their faces. Kanon's wound was unbelievably deep. And judging from Nanjo's pale face, it was almost a miracle that he was still conscious. No matter how much Nanja tried to wipe off the, the gushing deep red blood, he couldn't wipe it. He couldn't wipe it. He couldn't wipe it. Oh wow! I was I thought this was like a typo or something. He couldn't wipe it. He couldn't wipe it. He couldn't wipe it all away. And each time the wound was aggravated, causing Kanon to cry in anguish. Kanon, 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 Kanon. Please, カエのタオルです。なんて無語い。容体はどうですか。本音を言うと生きているのが信じられん不可でだ。刺されどころが幸運だったのかもしれん。だが出血がひどすぎる。輸血が必要だが、明日まで無理だ。Don't tell me Rose is the guilty party. Shabbat Yo, if you die on me right now, dude. Rosa Samanga Deska Sonna Kotote Sonna Kotote Machigai Nainoka. I Machigai Naka Rosa Samadista. Mosabir on Ide. Disregarding Nanjo and Kumasawa, who were struggling hard and stained with blood as they tried to stop the bleeding, Genji and Gota faced each other. Because if what Kanon had said was the truth, 
Rosa was the culprit who killed Jessica. <laughs> well, they, she did showcase, uh, what you call, a bit of a sadistic side whenever she kept smacking her daughter and also what was it when she was describing the deaths of the family when they were first discovered there was a bit there's a sense of I guess you can say like joy when with the way she was describing it so there's also that that little bit of hint that kind of showcased the possibility that she could be a suspect as well <laughs> But I'm trying to understand how it was Rosa and not a goat familiar. Again, this is pretty much what they were showing us to kind of blindside us in the first place. But I'm still trying to understand how that came to be. You know? Kanon screamed even more hatefully. His hate-filled voice made it seem like he had seen Jessica being harmed right before his eyes. ロザ様がお嬢様を殺す理由はあるかもしれない。むしろ<笑> Shannon suddenly ran out into the corridor. Her expression was complex and tragic as though she didn't know what to believe. Shannon ran. To where? Uh, to George? The inside of the mansion had been scrupulously cleaned so they probably wouldn't be easy to find. She might find some if she searched the rose garden but they would probably have all been lost in this wind and rain. That's right, the boiler room isn't cleaned very often. If she went there, she might be able to find some. Shannon ran down the stairs to search for those in the underground boiler room. I thought she was going straight to George, but... Had some medicine taken effect at the brink of death? Or had Kanon finally stopped even feeling pain? For the time being, Kanon had at least gotten over his painful gasping. Wow, this guy's still alive. Nanjo apparently didn't think of this as a great of a trend, and didn't let his eyes off Kanon for a second. Kumasawa firmly gripped Kanon's hand and kept encouraging him so that his will to stay alive didn't fall asleep. Genji and Goda seemed bewildered at how to deal with the truth that Kanon had risked his life to deliver. Wait, no, I just realized, hold on, no, 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 they definitely, she may have had a plan to kill Jessica, but she was still with the, she was still with Battler and George when they discovered the parents' death and Jessica ran off on her own. So she probably hired someone to do the, the, uh, the murder. Again, unless the the Rosa that was with Battler and <laughs> and George was a doppelganger. I again, guys, I don't know. <laughs> All these things are popping in my head just now, and I'm just trying to figure it out. You're shot anywhere near that thing. You're hurt pretty bad, close to death anyway. それより早く行動を起こさないと、また次の事件が起こる可能性も私たちはローザ様にうまく追い出された気がします。今頃ジョージ様やバトロ様が殺されている可能性も。ほほほほほほ。そんな危険な相手なら無理に刺激しない方が
想像もつきませんよ。源氏さん、こちらから仕掛けるべきです。せめて十歳理由をこじつけて奪えば、なんとかなるかも。玉は、死後初じゃありませんか。ということは、私たち全員を殺すには足りないということです。うかつに刺激しなければ、きっとローザ様もむやみには。うん。あいつは言ったよ。僕たちを皆殺しにすると言った。カノン who thought he had been sleeping quietly suddenly started talking brightly. Then again, カノン could also be lying and faking this whole injury. うん。No. Ah. <laughs> I want to believe in Kanon. I really do. Ah, but if it's Rosa, oh, that's gonna hurt me. Almost like he had been awake the whole time and had suddenly opened his mouth. He looked firm and steady, and Nanjo was slightly relieved, but thinking of the deepness of the wound, he couldn't wipe away a certain creepy feeling. He knew because he was a doctor. Kanon should have been expected to fall unconscious after losing so much blood, and that somehow he had preserved his awareness so clearly. Youth or tenacity. Sometimes the power of human life did surpass common knowledge. When they had stopped the bleeding to make sure there were no foreign objects inside the affected area, Nanjo had groped around a bit inside the bleeding hole with tweezers, and the great depth of the wound had surprised him. The wound had certainly reached as far as his lungs. And yet. And yet. No, on the other hand, the fact that he is alive is fortunate. But Kanon had spoken clearly. He had hatefully said that the one named Rosa had created this wound and was repeating curses and enraged words. I too, I'm a little bit of a child. 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 See, I'm seeing his eyes now. They don't look like the eyes of our standard canon. They look like our brainwashed, magic induced canon. So, again, they need to stop playing games with my mind right now. Aitsuwa <laughs> にわかには信じられんローザ様がそのようなことを源氏様信じる信じないじゃないあいつが僕にそこの僕が聞いたんですどうして信じてくれないんですか Because your eyes are creepy red, bro. 起きないで傷に触りますカノン sat up on the bed and spoke to Genji, who was making no effort to believe Kanon's story. あいつは僕たちを必ず全員殺す。もうきっと、客間の方々も殺されているに違いありません。僕らが先に殺さなければ、必ず僕らが先に殺される。僕が先に殺されたように、みんなも先に殺される。殺さなきゃ殺される。殺さなきゃ殺される。殺さなきゃ殺されるカンさんあんた本当に痛くないのかああこれですか大した傷じゃありません大した傷じゃないどころかあんたは本当に大した傷じゃない本当に大した傷じゃない As Kanon said that, he began to untie his own bandages, which had been painstakingly wrapped. The gruesome hole in his chest was immediately exposed. Kanon-san! Don't do that! Hurry up! 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 Everyone averted their eyes reflexively. Look, 
傷をいじってはいけませんほら見て全然深い傷じゃないんですよほらほらカノン held up two fingers show them to everyone and slowly start to stick them into the gruesome wound right in the center of his chest plunging slimy squishy wet the fingers went in deep to the base squish bloop bloop yeah this guy is in his right mind right now I don't know having stuck his fingers completely into his chest up to their base he slowly pulled them out in exactly the same way the fingers he pulled out were stained a sticky solid deep red color and there was even a thread hanging the fingers were all the way to their base covered in deep red <laughs> ね、全然大した傷じゃな<笑>うん、don't know who to trust now <laughs> This isn't our canon anymore Just then the door opened vigorously and Shannon appeared Even after she saw Kanon stained with fresh blood her impregnable expression didn't falter やあ姉さん、どこへ行っていたの僕が既得だというのに一体どこへボイラー室に行ってきたの探し物があってそれより確かめたいのあなたは本当にカノン君<笑> It was only natural Everyone believed he was Kanon So they couldn't understand the meaning of Shannon's question When they looked they noticed that Shannon was holding a handkerchief in her hand It was filthy and looked like she had wiped up some trash or dust and while holding that, she approached Kanon and drew close to his legs. What? <laughs> When Shannon brought the handkerchief close to Kanon's thigh, something happened in an instant. It happened all at once. The human eye couldn't have followed it. Kanon jumped back like a wild goat fleeing from the thing Shannon was holding, and his arms drew trails with some kind of afterglow that flashed purple. There were three beautiful purple trails drawn in an arc, and they were traced across the throats of Nanjo and Kumasawa, who had been tending to him. And Nanjo and Kumasawa's throats had opened like gaping mouths, and it was very instant before the blood was about to start spewing out. The third purple trail should have traced across Shannon's throat, but Shannon wasn't there, because Genji, who had been behind her, had wrapped his arm, his own arm around Shannon's neck and pulled her back. This all happened in an instant. <laughs> In the instant Goda tried to think fast in an attempt to understand the scene, the frozen moment in time shattered. Oh, so it was a demon. Which makes sense. But not really. Because if we're trying to... <laughs> if we're trying to disprove magic exists, then this should not be happening. Oh boy. Blood spewed forcefully from Nanjo Kumasawa's necks, which had been torn open. Still mid-jump, Kanon wall kicked off a picture frame that had been hanging from the wall behind him, springing forward just like a cat and aiming for Shannon's throat again. But Kanon's target once again disappeared from in front of him, because Genji had pulled Shannon again and the two of them had fallen to the ground, keeping flat to the floor. <laughs> Goda wasn't an idiot either. Even if he couldn't fully understand what was going on, he at least realized that if this Kanon wasn't seized, and wasn't seized, his own life would also be in peril. He sprung at Kanon with his huge body, pushing him up against the wall with his weight and physical strength. <laughs> so we lost Kumasawa and the doctor. <laughs> The 
the tips of the fingers on Kanon's right hand began to trace up another purple trail. And when he raised that blade hand up, aiming to strike at Goda's back, there was a loud thunk. Because Kanon's raised blade hand had been pinned to the wall. He couldn't tear his palm away from the wall. Sticking out from it was the knife Genji had thrown. Under normal circumstances, it should have been surprising to see someone as old as Genji handle a knife so skillfully. But in this abnormal space, no one paid it much mind. Genji, -sama, this is... mm. Genji took the handkerchief with the spiderweb stuck to it from Shannon. And he approached Kanon, who was pinned to the wall by Goda's massive body and the knife. Alright, we got fake Kanon. When Genji pushed the handkerchief up against Kanon's face, there was a sound just like the one you hear when you set meat on a red hot iron plate. Of course, the smell was the same too. As he was burned and inflamed, festering in filthy red and black, and cried out in his death throes, Kanon's body burst open and scattered. It was almost as though a balloon filled with gold leaf had popped. The entire servant room was completely buried under a storm of gold leaf. No, a rabble of gold butterflies. Of course. And how convenient the, the family, the Ushiromiya family, wasn't there to witness this. Those butterflies began to softly fade into nothingness as though dissolving into water. No, into the air itself. And afterwards, all that was left was the three of them sitting on their behinds, stained with blood. However, not everyone was stained with blood. Some of them were lying on the ground vomiting blood themselves. Kumasawa! Nanjo sensei! Oh, they're still alive? A slit so sharp that it looked like it could cut your finger if you touched it was open wide, causing large amounts of blood to keep pouring out. Oh no, they're dead. なんだったんだ。いや、今のは。ゴダ。怪我はないか。私は大丈夫です。しかし私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、
行方不明になっているカノン君かのどちらかしかありえない男か女かそれだけでも答えられるでしょうローザおばちゃん少し落ち着けって目の前で二人やられりゃ誰だって混乱だってするゴダさんゲンジさん焦らなくていいぜ何があったのか順を追って話してくれそれが何を私は言えばいいのかバクテナンジョンコムサウスさんは We understood that much, and it seemed that it had occurred in front of their eyes. But even so, they spoke awkwardly. They admitted that they had definitely seen the crime with their own two eyes. But when asked to explain what they had seen, their mouths went suddenly shut. I can understand why Auntie Rosa was irritated and losing her patience. Shannon, Kimi wa mita no kai. Nanjo sensei ga osoare ru tokoro. Hai. Boku ni oshiete. Wakaru koto dake demo ii. 一体何があったの勝手口に来たんですそそうです勝手口に誰かがやってきたんですそして誰だろうと私は扉を開けました勝手口に誰かそれは誰最後まで言わせてやれそれからそいつは血まみれで大怪我をしていました私たちは使用に室に運びすぐに南條先生が手当てをしましたそのとても深い傷でしただからそれは誰のことなのわからないんです確かに最初はそうだと思っていましたいや今でもそうだと思ってるんですでもあれは一体わからない。わからない。In a manner that didn't match his large body, Goda held his head and scratched at it. I didn't have a clue whether he was confused because he couldn't remember, or whether he was confused because he had seen something terrifying and couldn't accept it. It's the latter. And Shannon looked the same way. If she let her guard down, what she had seen just a short while ago would quickly melt away like a daydream, and she wouldn't even be able to remember what she saw. That's what she looked like. Only Genji looked composed as usual, so the questions were naturally directed at Genji. But even Genji had to take quite some time to gather his thoughts before he opened his mouth. Yeah, cause how on earth are you gonna explain that? You're gonna sound like a, gonna sound insane. Genji, san, anata wa mitan desho. Katte guchi ni kitano wa dare. Hajime, watakushi tachi wa sono jinbutsu ga kanon de aru to shinji mashita. Hora. やっぱり生きていたでしょ私の推理は正しかったはじめはってことは後にその認識は変わるってことはいその後に起こったことは口では説明できません南條先生と熊沢を殺しそして姿を消しましたその時彼は間違いなくカノンではありませんでしたそうそうなんです源氏さんの言う通りなんですよ口ではとても説明できない君も同じ意見なのかいはい私も同じことしか申し上げられません<笑> If we interrupted what they were saying favorably it meant that Auntie Rose's conclusion had been correct in the beginning Kanonkun had appeared from the back door in the kitchen with a serious injury. Then he had been taken to the servant room and cared for. Then something terrifying had happened. Since these people couldn't imagine that Kanonkun could have pulled that off, they had started to suspect whether that really had been Kanon. Is that how things are? In other words, this meant Kanonkun had appeared. No matter how confused they were, no matter how they muddled their words, that's what it meant in the end. So had Kanonkun indeed used some trick to escape that room while it was locked? No, that doesn't matter anymore. The real problem is that Dr. Nanjo and Kumasawa-san were killed. Auntie Rosa had claimed that Kanonkun was behind this from the very beginning. No matter how confused they became and no matter how much they tried to deny it, they were halfway saying that it was the truth. But even so, for some reason, I felt like their awkwardness couldn't be explained just by confusion. What had they seen? 
All right, everyone, I'm going to end the video here for today. Thank you all for watching. Holy cow, that was unbelievable. I was not expecting that. I wasn't expecting to have Kanon. I definitely wasn't expecting that to be a false version of him, a demon sent by uh, Beatrice herself. Or, I don't know, guys. <laughs> they keep throwing curveballs my way, and it keeps throwing my mind all over to, like, figure all this out. So... This is going to be great when I find out uh, how this all comes to be at the end of episode 2, if anything. So, we'll find out in the next one. So, thank you all for watching.